systematic literature reviews or SLRs are used constantly in the pharmaceutical industry to objectively collect and summarize available medical evidence. While the prospect of conducting a full medical SLR yourself can be daunting, it doesn't have to be, as there is a very simple step-by-step -step process you can follow, which I'm going to share with you in today's video. Follow along as I walk you through the nine steps to conduct your next medical SLR and point out the AI tools you can use along the way to help you speed up your journey to getting your SLR published that much faster. The very first thing we need to do is to define our research question or aim. To do so, we love to use one of two frameworks in the medical research. Specifically, I'm talking about the PICO and SPIDER framework, which are acronyms that both explain the same idea. Despite the SPIDER framework certainly having the much cooler name, the PICO criteria are more widely used and hence I'm going to use it in this video as well. PICO stands for Population, Intervention, Comparison and Outcomes and as such gives you four domains to consider when defining your research objective. Let's say we wanted to design an SLR that assesses interventions aimed at COPD disease management. We could use AI chatbots like ChatGPT to find these four domains of the PICO criteria for us using prompts. In our example, ChatGPT defined our research question as comparing the participation in a structured pulmonary rehabilitation program, our intervention, against standard medical care alone, which is our comparison, in a population of patients diagnosed with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, using improved exercise capacity and quality of life as the key outcomes. Once you've defined your research question using the PICO criteria, it's then time to start working on the protocol for your medical SLR. In the SLR protocol, you will outline the methods and criteria that you're planning on using to conduct your systematic search, which ensures both objectivity and transparency, forcing you to stick to the plan so that you can't retrospectively then adjust your methods to manipulate your SLR results. When drafting the SLR protocol, pay particular attention to three aspects. The first aspect includes the search strategy, which again uses your PICO criteria to string together a list of keywords and mesh terms using Boolean and or operators. As you can see, you can use ChatGPT to shape your SLR search strategy. Let's zoom in on the suggested search strategy for COPD management for a second. What we can see is that individual search terms for each of the four domains of the PICO criteria are combined using the Boolean OR operator to account for the use of synonyms and different wording used by researchers to describe their study. So for example, rather than spelling out chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, researchers might use COPD as an abbreviation, or they might use terms like chronic obstructive lung disease or chronic bronchitis instead. We want to include all possible combination of words and synonyms that we can think of which researchers might use to describe their population, intervention, comparison and outcomes we want to study in our SLR. Once that's done, we can combine those four domains using an AND query, which gives the relevant pool of studies that we need to assess. If you need further guidance on how to optimize your search strategy, have a look at the press statement, which covers best practice on developing electronic search strategies. I'll put a link to it down in the video description. Moving on to the second key aspect of the SLR protocol, we need to define which databases we're going to search. The databases you should select for your next SLR thereby depend on the research question, but medical SLRs typically leverage databases such as Medline, Embase, the Cochrane Library, PubMed or Signal. Apart from these databases, you might also want to consider searching databases like clinicaltrials.gov, especially if you're looking for studies that are currently still ongoing. And uh, Google Scholar can also be helpful as well as an additional tool to identify gray literature. Next up, our third and last key aspect of the SLR protocol has to 
explicitly describe the in and exclusion criteria which you're going to use for filtering and selecting your relevant articles. Defining these criteria before you run your SLR is crucial as it gives you some boundaries for your systematic review, providing you with a logical and consistent skeleton for study selection. There's some flexibility in how you can define your in and exclusion criteria, but I'll blend in some common examples here to help you come up with your own criteria. If you're serious about your SLR, you might also want to consider registering your SLR protocol through Prospero, which is a prospective register that aims to prevent unintended duplication of research efforts. Now that the protocol is written, we can move on to the fun part, which is running your systematic search. To do so, you need to decide on a search interface that you're going to use for your SLR. I personally recommend Ovid as it gives you access to multiple databases and simultaneously offers advanced search features we've discussed earlier, allowing you to use complex Boolean queries and medical subject headings. The only caveat is that Ovid requires you to have institutional access granted via universities, hospitals or other research institutions. So if you don't have that, you would need to rely on the free PubMed interface, which is not as feature rich. Since I'm guessing you're less likely to run an SLR purely for fun, I'm assuming though that you've got access to Ovid for this video. Once you're logged into Ovid via your institutional access, the first thing you should do is create a personal account. You could use Ovid without one, but creating a personal account allows you to save your past searches and also receive publication alerts. After creating your account in Ovid, you can come over to the search tab. This is where you can copy paste the individual elements of your search strategy from your protocol. Running your search will result in several records representing the number of papers you need to screen. As you can see, our COPD search suggested by ChatGPT resulted in 242 total records for us to screen. Note how we've combined individual keywords for each Pico domain using OR operators and then combined those searches using AND operators. Step four of the SLR process is where you can use AI again if you want to do so. In a traditional SLR, a researcher would manually go through all identified records and make individual decisions whether to include or exclude a paper. Given that the number of records you need to screen for a typical medical SLR can easily be in the thousands, you can see why this becomes very labor intensive very quickly. This is where AI assisted screening tools like ASR Review can help out as they rearrange the stack of papers you're reviewing based on the inclusion and exclusion decisions you make in real time, pushing the more relevant records up the stack so you see them sooner and saving you a lot of time in the process. Whether or not you're using AI for this step, you should do two types of screening. Firstly, you want to start with a title and abstract screening through which you can swiftly separate the wheat from the chaff allowing you to filter out irrelevant records. Secondly, you want to proceed with a full text screening for those records that you deemed relevant in your title and abstract screening, moving on to a more rigorous assessment against your predefined in and exclusion criteria. As you're doing these two types of screening, make sure to note down the reason why you're in or excluding certain studies constantly checking against the criteria that you've previously defined in your research protocol. This is important as ideally you want to have two independent reviewers screening all the records individually, which would allow you to measure so-called inter-rater agreeability through means like Kappa statistics. Additionally, tracking in and exclusion reasons for each record will help you visualize your screening process using a Prisma flowchart, which looks something like this. I'll leave a link to the full Prisma statement in the video description, as it is considered best practice to follow such guidelines when developing a medical SLR. 
In the next step, we want to extract data from the studies we've included as part of our SLR. For this purpose, you should create a data extraction grid that allows you to capture key information from the final studies you've included in your review. You can use a simple Excel or Google Sheet to extract your data from the included full text PDFs. Or you might want to play around with AI tools like Chat PDF, which allows you to interact and converse with PDF files. As you can see, you can simply drag and drop your PDF files into this box on their website and start asking questions. During my testing, I found this tool to be a bit hit and miss though. So in case you're planning on using tools like this one, make sure that you're carefully reviewing all the data that you're extracting via AI. After the data extraction stage, it's time to then synthesize your data. Hereby, you can either do a qualitative or a quantitative summary of the data, which means that you're either summarizing your findings narratively or via methods like meta-analysis, usually presenting results like forest plot to visualize your results in a more appealing manner. You used to be able to do meta-analysis in free tools like Cochrane Revman, which is now sadly hidden behind a paywall. So you now need to revert to Excel-based tools like Mix 2.0, dedicated software packages like CMA, or stat software like R, Python, or Stata to get your results. If you're planning to conduct a meta-analysis, you should look into effect size calculations, random and fixed effects models, heterogeneity assessment, and the distinction between meta-analysis and network meta-analysis, as I won't be covering these topics in this video. While AI can be used during the data summary step, such applications are currently discussed in the realm of scientific papers with custom-built solutions in Python or similar software, with really no free to use off the shelf products being readily available to my knowledge at least. I'll add a link to a recent paper from Atkinson if you're interested in learning more about such approaches. An important step that you shouldn't skip in your medical SLR is to assess the quality of your included studies, highlighting the potential risk for bias that might affect conclusions from your SLR. For this purpose, you can use one of many tools to assess the risk of bias. The tool that's best suited for your SLR thereby depends on the type of studies included in the SLR and the specific biases that are most relevant to your research question. If, for example, your SLR focuses solely on RCTs, then you can use the Cochrane Risk of Bias tool. If instead you're focused on non-randomized studies, you could use the Newcastle Ottawa scale. Other popular tools include QDIS2, GRADE, AMSTER2, or ROBIS, which all have their dedicated intended purpose. In any case, you should aim to present your risk of bias in a tabular format. For example, using a simple traffic light system like the one on screen so that it's easy for your readers to quickly determine the risk of bias of the studies that you've included in your SLR. You also want to be mindful of who you're preparing your SLR for in case you're preparing an SLR as part of mandatory submission materials. HDA bodies, for example, might prefer one risk of bias tool over another, which should guide your choice for the right tool to use. One of the last things you need to do is to report the findings of your SLR. During this step of the process, you want to make sure to double check that you don't forget to report relevant aspects in your final manuscript. To help you avoid such reporting errors, you can rely on tools like the Prisma 2020 checklist, which points out 27 key items throughout your report, including title, abstract, introduction, methods, results, discussion, and other important information for you to critically review before finalizing your report. With your report written, the last step of the SLR blueprint is to get your report published. Preferably, you want to target a relevant peer-reviewed journal in your niche with a high impact factor. In case you don't want to go through the process of getting published in a peer-reviewed journal, 
which can be very lengthy. You might want to submit your results to a conference, which tend to have fewer barriers of entry and are quicker to submit to usually. Additionally, you can upload your work to online platforms like ResearchGate to make them available to a broader audience. Regardless of which of those ways of publication you should choose, you should set up your ORCID profile, which gives you a unique persistent identifier that can help you receive credit for your work. If you found this step-by-step -step guide for conducting medical SLRs useful, subscribe to my channel, where I post lots of videos like this one. If you're curious to learn more about the pharmaceutical industry, check out my video about the drug development process, which you can find here. As always, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.